Okay, number three. It says compare and contrast Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem. And then there's an additional uh, piece of information here. Both assume that F is continuous. Actually, it's, it's, it goes without saying that F has to be defined on this open in, uh, closed interval AB. It's continuous on an open interval AB, which means it's continuous at the endpoints as well. And it's differentiable uh, on the open interval AB. Both, uh, uh, both the uh, Rolle's theorem and means val mean value theorem do have all of these conditions. Okay, but for the uh, Rolle's theorem, there's one more, and that is f of a is equal to f of b is equal to zero. Okay, so in Rolle's theorem, we are talking about a function like this, where it has to start on the x-axis, and it can do any kind of wild things, whatever, uh, and then it has to end, you know, at zero again. And it has to be smooth. That's what it means by differentiable. And continuous means it doesn't you know, jump over or anything like that. So this doesn't happen. So in Rolle's theorem, you have four hypotheses. Defined on the closed interval, continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, and they uh, both end at the y value of 0. f of a and f, b, f of b are equal to 0. Then, okay, the Rolle's, the Rolle's theorem says, then, there is, whoops, there is at least one point on this open interval, not A or B, open interval A, B, such that the derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so you are guaranteed that at least one point exists. In this picture, there seem to be like three points where uh, the tangent is horizontal but there is at least one of those points where the derivative has to be equal to zero, okay? That is Rolle's theorem. Now, it sounds weird, and Rolle, as far as we know, is not known for anything else except for this accomplishment, which, you know, it, it, it turns out to be an extremely important step in, um, in the theory of calculus, but Rolle gets one uh, theorem named after him, and that's this one, right? And based on that, we have the mean value theorem, with, uh, with uh, no name attached to it. We don't, I don't even know who uh, proved the mean value theorem. That, that is one of the backbones of calculus, right? Because it tells you how the derivative is related to the increasing and decreasing nature of a function. For, um, okay, so this is in Rolle's theorem. But in the mean value theorem, you actually have these three. The mean value theorem says, if uh, f has to be defined on the uh, closed interval, continuous there, and differentiable on the open interval, then there is a point C on AB such that, and the way to remember this, oh, by the way, the way to remember Rolle's theorem is exactly this picture. Okay, once you remember that, and you remember there has to be a point where the uh, tangent is horizontal, okay, you got Rolle's theorem. Mean value, the, the mean value theorem says, uh, without this, okay, you don't have to have this criteria, criterion, uh, but the mean value theorem says, if you have these first three hypotheses satisfied, then there is a point, okay? So in other words, you have something like this. You have A, B, you have some function like this. There is a point C, so that f prime of c, the derivative of here is parallel to, or the derivative is exactly the same as the line connecting a comma f a and b comma f b. So that would be f of b minus f of a all over b minus a, which is basically the change of y divided by change of x, right? This is what we call the, the the slope of the secant line between A and B. And so that is what the mean value theorem says. Both of these are important and you should remember these as pairs. One, the Rolle's theorem is um, fundamental for proving the mean value theorem. In fact, the mean value theorem is proved um, only after you prove Rolle's theorem. Okay, so that's number three. Let's go to number four. Um, for this number of four, you have four functions, and you are to find um, asymptotes, okay? Any asymptotes. 
it says horizontal and vertical, but maybe any other ones too. Okay, so what do you think about this one here? Uh, this is a rational function. You may have seen functions like this in your um, pre-calculus course. Uh, one, the top is one, which means the function value will never be zero, you know, because this fraction will never be zero. The only way a fraction can be zero is if the top, the numerator is zero and one is never zero, no matter what day of the week you are talking about, right? And so that is, um, that's one thing to keep in mind, but this thing can become zero. And in fact, when X is three, uh, F is undefined. So what happens when F gets closer and closer to three? Well, um, <clears throat> so here's the three. Uh, basically, as the denominator becomes closer and closer to zero and the top is not, the graph goes to infinity, right? Either positive or negative infinity. In this case, uh, just imagine as X gets closer and closer to three, but stays positive, stays on the right side of it, like 3.1, 3.01, 3.0001, the denominator will become very close to zero and stays as a positive number. So one over a very small positive number, one over 0 0.001 is in a thousand, right? So it'll just keep going up to infinity. Uh, on the other hand, oh, by the way, when X is equal to zero, this is negative one third. So it'll be somewhere really close here and the graph will go this way. Why? Well, because if you plug in numbers close to three, but slightly less than three, such as 2.9, 2.999 and so on, this will become a, a negative number very close to zero. And that will force f of x to approach negative infinity. So you have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to three. How about horizontal asymptotes? Well, you can see as X approaches positive infinity or negative infinity, the graph approaches zero. The Y value becomes closer to zero. Why is it? Well, if this X approaches positive infinity, you have one over a huge number and that would uh, approach zero. If X approaches negative infinity, this will be one over a very negative number, like a negative four million or something. And that's also going to approach zero. So the horizontal asymptote is at Y is equal to zero, which is another way of saying it's the X axis. All right, number two, you have another function similar to it, X over X plus three. Okay, so um, once again, this can be zero, right? When is this going to be zero? When X is negative three, you have the function undefined, okay? And so you can think of what happens when X is negative three. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, think about um, numbers like negative 3.1, okay? If you have negative 3.1, this will be negative. And then of course, this will be negative, negative over negative, and it goes to positive infinity, okay? Like this. And uh, if, uh, well, like for instance, if F of zero will be zero, so that's gonna go through here. And uh, if um, F is like negative, I'm sorry, X is negative two or negative 2.1, negative 2.3, negative 2.9, negative 2.9999, this will be negative 2.999, but this will be slightly positive. Okay, so it's negative divided by a number that's positive, but approaching zero. So that will give you something that goes to negative infinity like this. Okay, now remember it does go through this. And by the way, these are called uh, rational functions, polynomial divided by polynomial. And we do know, uh, maybe you studied this in pre-calculus that, um, any rational number is smooth and continuous wherever it's defined. So um, apart from these uh, vertical asymptotes, the function will be continuous, okay? So this is also continuous. Now what happens, so you have a vertical asymptote at X is equal to negative three, okay? How about horizontal asymptote? Now the horizontal asymptote, to study the horizontal asymptote, you just basically, uh, figure or try to determine the um, limit of these functions at infinity. So what's going to happen to this? Well, you may already know the answer here. Uh, if the top and bottom have the same 
degree, in this case it does because it's both first degree, uh, then the uh, slope, the uh, sorry, not the slope, the horizontal asymptote will be the fraction, the, the ratio of the leading coefficients. In, in this case, it's one over one, and so that's going to be one. But the way to think about this is you can also write, remember the limit, uh, you can just divide, you know, you can, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, hello, let's go ahead and do this. I will, yep. All right, I can divide everything by X here, for instance. Okay, I'm dividing the top and the bottom by X. Can I do that? Sure, All right. um, because we let limit X go to infinity. So that's going to be one plus three over X. Now, as X approaches infinity, this thing goes to zero. And so the limit will be one over one, and that's one. And so that's, a, and by the way, you can do the same thing with a negative infinity. As X approaches negative infinity, this fraction will approach positive one as well. So you do have one horizontal asymptote and that's uh, uh, positive one, okay? Which means uh, when X is positive one, it goes like this and the graph. And by the way, uh, F, F of X, the Y value will never actually be one, okay? Why is it? Well, because the top and bottom are different, okay? And in fact, the bottom is precisely three bigger than the top, okay? So if they are not the same number, f of x will never be equal to one, right? And in fact, when x is a positive number, this is slightly less than one. And if it's x, x is negative, if it, x is a very negative number, then the value y will be slightly bigger than um, one. Okay, so that's what's happening. All right, number three. My computer is slowing down, so give me a second. Okay, number three is x plus sine of x. You know sine of x goes like this, right? And then uh, x, y is equal to x is this line. Add them together, you basically have something that goes along this and a sine curve that goes along here. Oops, I guess the sine curve should not look like this. It should go up first. Oops, and then, yeah, down this way. And so it'll be something like this. You know, basically just sort of like this. Okay, uh, it's not a very nice picture. But we are not really concerned about this uh, because all we have to do is to look for horizontal and vertical asymptote. Now, this is the differentiable function. This is a differentiable function. F itself is a differentiable function, which means it's continuous everywhere. And um, if it's continuous, there is no vertical asymptote. Okay, no vertical asymptote. Why? Because vertical asymptote assumes you have a discontinuity, uh, it, the type we, we call infinite discontinuity. And uh, that cannot happen if the derivative exists. All right, and so that's there's no uh, vertical asymptote and there's no horizontal asymptote. How do we know that? Well, again, because remember, sine of x only goes up and down by one or negative one, right? So x goes to infinity. And so it's just going to be infinity plus one. I mean, you know, very large number x plus or minus one. That's where f of x is going to be. So it'll keep going up and down, up and down like this, but it's not going to converge to any you know, particular y value. So there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, that's a, actually, a, it seems like a hard question, but it's actually a pretty easy question. Uh, the last one, log of, do you know what the natural log of x looks like? It looks like this. It goes through the point one zero because you know e to the zero power is one, so it's opposite. Log of one is zero, and it actually goes to infinity, and it goes to negative infinity here, right? Now x plus one. The thing is, if you replace x with x plus one, then the graph shifts one unit to the right. Sorry, to the left, and so you are going to have a function like this. Now you can sort of check, you know, does it go through zero, zero? Well, log of zero plus one is log of one, which is zero. So it does go through zero. And as X approaches negative one from uh, the right, this number gets, or still remains as a positive number. So the LN of that number exists. 
it, ln is defined for a number close to zero as long as it's positive, but it, the uh, value goes to negative infinity. So uh, you do have vertical asymptote, x is negative one. And uh, when x is less than negative one, the graph doesn't even exist because the function is not defined. See, this, I should say it's defined only on um, negative one to infinity. Nothing less than negative one. And not even at negative one is this defined, right? Because ln of zero is not defined. And then uh, there is a horizontal asymptote. No, there is no horizontal asymptote, okay? Uh, this one gets very uh, slow. It, the growth is very slow for logarithmic uh, functions, but it still does go to infinity. Um, you know, if, um, well, how do I say this? Um, <clears throat> If you have e to the 11th power, then the value of the log uh, is um, you know, 11, right? e to the 12th power, log of e to the 12th is 12. So it grows very slowly, but it does go to infinity. It's probably the slow, one of the slowest moving functions that we are going to study, or slowly increasing function. All right, so those are the four functions under number four. Let's take a break, and then on the next segment, we will start with number five.